everyone, my name is Rachel. I teach the two and three year old Sunday school class. This week I just have a story um, and then next week we have something exciting to look forward to. We're going to do a live Sunday school class. Um, it'll be geared for kids maybe like first grade and down to preschool. Um, so we'll have some more details about that in the next few days. Today I'm going to read in the beginning the story of creation. I thought it would be fun since we're all home um, and we're all getting to enjoy the wonderful things that God made for us. Um, this would be an appropriate story. In the beginning, the story of creation. In the beginning, before time began, there was nothing. Nothing to see, nothing to hear, nothing to touch or smell. There was only silence. God moved alone through the inky darkness. Then God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was covered by water. Let there be light, God said. It was faint at first, a flicker in the darkness that grew and grew. It became a glowing ball that pushed the gloom aside, soft and yellow, then red, pink, and dazzling gold. God delighted in its loveliness. The changing light seemed to have a life of its own, and God called it day. When the light faded into darkness, he named it night. This was the very first day of the world. On the second day, when the light came back, God made the sky. It was soft, bright blue, and it hung over the earth like a canopy. On the third day of the world, God drew back the choppy water so that solid ground appeared. The great pools of water, blue like the sky and shimmering in the light, he named seas. He called the big muddy areas of ground land. The land was flat and bare, so God shaped it into mountains, plains, and deep valleys. Under his guiding hand, greenery covered the earth. Grasses and plants of every size, shape, and color took root. Sweet-smelling flowers blossomed, sticky buds opened, and vines coiled upwards. Trees sprang from the ground, their branches reaching for the sky, growing tall and heavy with fruit. The earth had become lush and green and brimmed with plant life. On the fourth day, God said, let there be signs to mark the day and night. He made the fiery sun to show the day and the gentle moon to shine at night. During the day, the moon hid in the shadows. At night, the sun turned its golden face away while the moon cast its silvery beams over the land. God also brightened the night sky with millions upon millions of tiny glittering stars. He felt pleased with the beautiful world he created. God's new world was a peaceful land filled with flowers, trees, and rushing rivers. But there were no birds to perch in the trees. There were no bees to buzz from flower to flower, nor fish to leap through the waves. The only sounds were the whisper of the wind among the leaves and the waves lapping on the shores. On the fifth day, God filled the waters with living creatures. Suddenly the sea teemed with fish that moved as one. He made whales that sent great plumes of spray high up into the sky and dolphins that leaped playfully in and out of the waves. He made jellyfish that shimmered like the moonlight, shellfish that sparkled like precious stones, and tiny crabs that waved their claws on the golden sands. Then God said, let there be creatures of the air that will fill the sky with life. There began a great fluttering of feathers and flapping of wings, and a cloud of birds and insects of all shapes and sizes rose into the sky. Tiny chirruping sparrows mingled with colorful parakeets and silent gliding hawks. The sky was alive with color and sound as the twittering birds found shelter among the trees and bushes, discovered fruit, and washed their feathers in the bright streams. Their happy songs filled God's ears, and he blessed them. On the sixth day of the world, God said, Now let there be creatures on the land. The earth began to shake with the thunder of a thousand feet. The world hummed with voices large and small, jostling to be heard. Regal lions prowled beside mighty elephants and rhinos. Monkeys swung through the trees, cackling to each other. And bears lumbered through the undergrowth. Fierce animals paced side by side with the gentlest of God's creatures. Everyone from the tiny shrews to the tall giraffes was looking for a new home. Some liked the cool of the snowy mountains, and some preferred the heat of the rainforest. Snakes slithered through the jungles, crocodiles hid in rivers, and squirrels climbed all tall trees. The world pulsed with life. 
God looked around and was happy with what he saw, but something was missing. Who will care for all the animals? God asked himself. He took handfuls of earth and shaped two creatures who looked like him. He called them man and woman. As God poured his breath into them, the man and woman began to move. They opened their eyes and stared around them in wonder. Slowly they stretched their arms and legs and rose to their feet. They stood in front of God holding hands as beautiful and innocent as the new world. God blessed them. He named the man Adam and the woman Eve. Your job is to look after the wonders I have created, he said. You will rule over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, and every creature on earth. You will have fruit to eat and water to drink. I want you to enjoy your life here. God's work was done. The world was every bit as beautiful as he had imagined. It was the seventh day and God rested. Next, God made a beautiful garden for Adam and Eve and named it Eden. There were flowers and trees full of delicious fruit to eat and velvet soft grass to lie on. A sparkling stream gave Adam and Eve clean water to drink. There was a huge tree in the middle of the garden its branches reached into the sky like upstretched arms, and God named it the Tree of Knowledge. You can pick fruit from any tree in the garden except the Tree of Knowledge, he told Adam and Eve. If you eat from that tree, you will die. Adam and Eve listened to everything God told them. They had all they needed, and they were happy. They cared for the animals in the garden just as God had told them. One day... Eve was picking berries near the tree of knowledge when she heard a rustling in the leaves of the tree. A snake was watching her, its tongue flicking in and out. Smell the sweet fruit, the snake hissed. Try it, taste it. No, Eve replied. God has told us we must not eat from the fruit of the tree of knowledge or we will die. The snake shook its head. It would make you as wise as God. It said, just one bite would make you a goddess. The snake's words made Eve long to try it. Slowly, she picked a rosy apple and drew it towards her. It smelled sweet and delicious, and her heart thumped with fear and excitement. Eve could not resist. She took a tiny bite of the apple. Adam saw her, and although he knew it was wrong, he burned with curiosity. So Eve handed him the apple and tried it. Smiling, the snake slithered away. God knew at once what Adam and Eve had done. He was upset and angry. You must leave Eden, he told them. From now on, the lives of humankind will be full of trouble and worry. Now that you have eaten from the tree of knowledge, your bodies will eventually die. But I will find a way to save you. Adam and Eve shivered as the gates of Eden clanged shut behind them. Greed had taken them from a place of gentle breezes to a cruel world where the wind bit and the rain soaked their bodies. But God, who loves his people, gave Adam and Eve something very special. He gave them hope. Perhaps one day, he told them, humankind might yet return to the beautiful Garden of Eden, Eden and to the love of God. The end. So the story mentions that God was going to find a way to save Adam and Eve and that he gave us hope. And that hope came to us in the form of Jesus and Jesus as our Savior. When the Savior came, he died for Adam and Eve's sins and for their children's sins too, and also for ours. We are all sinners, but God forgives us if we ask him to because Jesus died to take away our sins. Before we pray together, I just have one last thing that I wanted to share. Today, every morning we enter a new day. Who knows what the day will bring? God knows which is why he tells us to not be afraid. He has already gone ahead of us into the new day. He knows the way, what will happen, all we'll need. In the morning, we can put our day in his hands and let him bring into our day whatever he has for us. And then in the evening, we give it back to him and trust in him with all that happened in it. Do not be afraid or discouraged for the Lord will personally go ahead of you. He will be with you. From Deuteronomy 31.8. So before we go, I wanted to remind you that this coming weekend we'll be doing a live Sunday school lesson uh, for first grade down through preschool and just keep your eye out for more details on that. 
and if you would just join with me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray to you today to thank you for the ability that we have to stay connected during this time. And Lord, I just ask that you fill our hearts with peace and with patience um, and help us endure this blessing of time that we have together, Lord. And I ask that you are with our leaders and help them make informed decisions for us. And Lord, I just ask that you keep everyone safe and healthy and happy until we're able to join together again. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.